Hey everyone, let's get started with problem 535, encode and decode tiny URL. It has an acceptance rate of 74.1% and it's considered a medium. Um, let's get started. So uh, it says tiny URL is a URL shortening service where you enter a URL such as this long URL and it returns a short URL such as tinyurl.com slash whatever that is. Um, design the encode and decode methods for a tiny URL service. There's no restriction on how you encode or decode your algorithm. Uh, you should just ensure that a URL can be encoded to a tiny URL and a tiny URL can be decoded to the original URL. All right, so part of understanding is this is uh, we're gonna be given an input which is a URL, so basically a string. And we want to map this uh, URL to an output, which is like tinyurl.com slash whatever. So that's also a string. So immediately, um, we know that we're mapping a string to a string. That leads me to think about a hash map um, because we want to have a key, which is the input string, and an output, or a value, which is the output string. But one thing I noticed here is that it also said we have to <coughs> decode back to the original URL. So this, uh, this value should also map to the key so I'm thinking maybe we can use two hash maps, uh, one from key to value and then the other one flipped around. Uh, let's try it out. So <clears throat> it says uh, our codec object, which is this object, will be instantiated and called such as new codec and codec.decode. Whatever you encode, you want to decode that back. All right, cool. Um, let's create the constructor. So public codec, it's gonna be called with the empty constructor. So let's go ahead and also create a private hash map. Let's just call it a map. From string to string. Uh, let's say long to short map um, is it for there and then let's do the same thing for short to long encoded let's keep the, the variable naming similar short to long map and basically here we'll just instantiate it and then this one will be the other map um, after that, when you encode a URL, basically what you want to do is, um, let's assume that there's not going to be any hashing collisions or anything like that, or if there is, um, the, the hash map takes care of it. Um, if this was our own, like, naive implementation of a hash map, you might want to handle those collisions and, uh, think about how you'd handle them so you could talk about that with an interviewer. Um, but I'm pretty sure the hash map like the Java class takes care of those collisions for us. So uh, let's just say, so we get a URL and we want to encode that. So we just say long to short, we have to create the, the new, uh, whatever the new key is. So let's just uh, give it a simple key. Let's call it, let's make it of the type integer. Uh, Key or whatever uh, encoded value. So it's just like a counter basically for right now. Um, so this one will basically go up to integer.max, which is, I believe, I want to say 2 million. Two Billion. So million, uh, thousands, 
millions, billions, so two billion. Um, this hash map can, or this uh, this URL service can hold the two two billion URLs, which isn't a lot, but um, I know like in some other languages you can have like a thing called a big integer. We can kind of look into that for this and for Java and talk about that. But for right now, let's go ahead with uh, integer and hold two billion values. Um, <clears throat> so we'll say encoded value, increment that. So the first um, URL we get will be zero, I mean one, and so on. It'll keep increasing. Um, and then we will basically put long to short map dot put I'll put in the long URL and the key will be encoded URL it's going to equal um, www dot tiny how they spell it Tiny URL, so no s. Dot com slash four e nine i a. Oh wait, sorry. Plus encoded. Um, I forgot to mention. So I know I went ahead and uh, skipped these. Oh, my screen sharing start stopped. Uh, let me let me try to get that back. So I know I, I basically just went over the U for understanding and then I matched it to the hash map. I didn't really plan or pseudocode it because it was pretty simple. Um, we'll just, when we encode something, uh, we take it in, we create the URL, we put it in the hash map, and then we also put the reverse in the other hash map. And so I went ahead and skipped to the implementation. Um, so my bad on that. But basically here, let's take this, post a prefix um, encoded URL. And then same thing for the short, short map. So we'll take this, put this here, take this and put this here as a value. And then when you put this, um, so if the map contains it, if it's short, to long map that contains key short URL. You want to just go ahead and return it. Return the short to long map uh, dot get short URL. Otherwise, you just want to return an empty string or throw an exception or whatever the, uh, I guess, standard is, um, which you can talk about your in with your interviewer, like the benefits of each. Um, the reason why I was like a little slow there is because I was realizing we actually don't need to map, uh, we don't need two maps, we just need the short to long map because um, we're not really doing a lookup here. We're not doing any, we're not looking anything up in this map um, ever. At least it seems that way. So I'll go ahead and remove that, remove that, and remove that. And so now we just map the encoded URL to this long URL, which is basically like if you went into the browser and just typed in google.com or tinyurl.com, um, you'll be able to, if you did tinyurl.com and it was mapped to like with the, let's say tinyurl.com slash one, two, three, it'd be mapped to Google, so it does a look up tiny URL, and it takes that last part of the URL and then sees what's mapped with it, what's mapped with it, and uh, it'll return Google. So then it'll give you google.com. Let's go ahead and try this out. Um, before I click run, just want to make sure, so we instantiate a new hash map, um, create the encoded URL, put that in the, the map, 
And then if it contains this key, then we return what the actual URL is. Otherwise, we'll return an empty string, and so it seems good. So bad operand type. Yep, that. So let's just do. Let's just take this up here. Oh, I realized because I put should be encoded value. Yep, makes sense. Line 15, missing, okay, yeah. So what are we supposed to return here? Um, it says encode the URL to a shortened URL. I'm guessing it returns the encoded URL. All right, cool. So basically what it did is it took this input um, encoded it, which returned, let's say, uh, tinyurl.com slash one, put that in the map, and then it tried decoding it, and it came here in this contains key, and it saw that it contains it, and then it returned whatever the value was, so it returned back this value. Um, let's go ahead and submit it. Another way we could have done this is instead of using an integer like uh, this encoded value, we could have uh, taken the hash value of this long URL and stored it in the hash map. Um, but that, that's what I meant, where you might have some collisions, uh, such as if it's very unlikely, but two URLs that map or that have the same hash code, um, and you put them in the map, there would be one would overwrite the other one. So that's why I use this integer. Um, it also doesn't have to be an integer. It could be like a string of characters. So the first one could be AAAA, and then the second one could be AAAAAA b whatever and so on and so forth along with numbers to to have more options um all right so let's discuss the let's review it and discuss the big o times um, let me open my screen sharing So here, um, the encode, we saw that it takes a constant number of steps. All we're doing is generating an encoded URL and putting it in the um, hash map, and then we're returning the encoded URL. So no matter how many URLs, or like how long the URL is, we're still doing a constant number of steps. So our encode method is basically big O of one, um, because we're doing constant step, uh, constant number of steps. And the same thing goes for the decode. Um, all we're doing is looking it up in the hash map. Um, and this is for time complexity. So let me just write encode time and decode does also the same thing. No matter how long the URL is, uh, we're just going to do those number of steps. Basically, the number of steps doesn't increase uh, with the size of the string. Um, the, this object, the codec object, it does take up some space because we're using the map. And the number of times we call the encode method, so when you do like codec.encode and you pass the URL, the number of times you do that is the, the, the space that's taken up by the hash map that also grows. So we could say that they go up in. Um, but yeah. So that, there was that. Um, we talked about some of the trade-offs we made, such as um, the using something like AAAA instead of an integer. You could have used the hash values, but we talked about why we might not want to do that. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's basically this problem. It was pretty quick as well, um, and it was rated at a medium. I want to see what people put as their solutions. Let's take a look at Java solution with random string generation. So they created the hash map as well. Um, they used UUID, which is also a good idea um, because that'll give you a pretty large number of random uh, URLs or random keys. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Three different solutions. Simple counter. So this is the one I implemented. Um, 
using a hash code. We talked about this as well. Uh, and then a random function. So they just took random uh, r.nextint from 0 to 10,000. Um, so cool. There's many ways to do this, and you might want to talk with your interviewer about like which way is, which way is the best or most optimal for the use case. Um, there isn't really truly a best, but there is something that has that works better for your case probably.